Edit Titans. In this video, we'll talk about an exciting new feature we have at Form Titan. From now on, you can run your Apex code from Titan. So um, let me show you a little piece of code here. So we have a REST resource class. It has to be a REST resource class in order for us to invoke it from Titan. And um, we only support post. Um, so we have a, a post method here, testFT, which what it does, we're extracting the request data from this, the JSON that we will get from um, Titan. And we don't have any parameters for this uh, method. So we're just going to extract the JSON that we're getting. I'm extracting it with the serialized un untyped. You can uh, deserialize to a class or whatever it is you like. And in this instance, um, extracting a parameter called name, um, splitting it by semicolon, just in case we get a list of names, and then our query Salesforce, um, I'm just going to run a simple select to get all the accounts where the name is in my uh, list of strings, and then I will put them in a I'll put them in a list of string to returns the IDs of the accounts, and I'll return a list of string to Titan. One thing to notice here is that whenever you want Titan to uh, process your information, we'll be able to process your information and take further actions in Form Titan, then you should return a, a list of string or just a string and typically it would be the IDs of the objects that you created or manipulated or um, you queried, whatever it is. Uh, just return these and then you can take further actions in Titan and I'll show you how we can get this done in just a moment um, This is just a very very simple um, example uh, To do this you don't need to use um, Apex obviously um, Just showing you how it works um, Just think about it. you could do anything that you do with code you can run here and invoke it directly from Titan so if you have callouts or um, complicated logic that you gotta run code for it this is the place to do it um, so let's start so let's uh, throw a text box that will be my parameter and I'll say account names so this we will send to our um, rest resource and let's throw a hidden so we can get the Apex response. Let's make it a little bigger and we'll put it in here for now. And now we're going to head over to our get. So, form settings, Salesforce integration, set get, we'll add an object, and we're going to look for your Apex. Um, let's do run. This is the URL mapping of my class. And you should paste in your URL mapping, not the class name, your URL mapping. This is basically your endpoint. And you already have um, part of the endpoint here. We're just gonna paste this guy here and set the parameters. So you can set as many parameters as you like, whatever you need to, to get in your code in order for it to work. You can send it over directly from here. So let's hit use and we're going to give it the name just like I have in my class. So that's the name and let's apply and let's set our mapping. And we want to map the apex response and we're going to map it to a value. This is the only thing we have here to map. It's the value. This is the value that gets returned from your apex. So let's apply and let's take a look at this window a little bit more so you can run this on form load, you can execute this in a custom action or button, so you can reuse this in conditions or um, custom actions. Uh, you can set role conditions when when you would like it to run or not, and obviously the mapping. And you can have custom messages if no data found, or if you want to disable your form or skip message. So it's pretty similar to your regular get or push. So let's apply this and save my form and I'll publish and let's search for donkey. 
I'll run this and I got two accounts since I have two donkey accounts in Salesforce. Let's say I want to find um, donkey and let's search for accounts named hello. I'll run this and I got a bunch of results. So let's just add some more parameters and then I'll show you how we get this in Salesforce so you can see how the JSON looks like. So I'm just going to add um, some other params. And we'll call this from one. And that will be from two. And let's head over to our your Apex and set the parameters. So that will be from um, and right now, obviously, I'm not processing these in Salesforce, so it's meaningless, but let me just show you how it looks like in the debug log. So I set some uh, system debug here, so we can see the request data that we're getting from Titan. And I'll refresh my form, and let's take a look. So I'm gonna write hello, and notice now that it's not running since when you set these as params, it will only send it to it will only send a request to your uh, Apex code when all these params are filled up. So that will be param one. Uh, that will be the value of it, and this will be param two. Okay, now I'll leave the scope, and we can see it went to Salesforce. I still got the results since the only thing I'm processing on my class is hello. Let's take a look at our debug logs. And I'll head over to the latest one. And let's see our request data. And here it is. You can see you're getting just a simple JSON from Titan. So you can build your JSON however you need. And then you can process it in your class. So this is pretty cool. Um, and again, you can deserialize it either on typed or deserialize it with a class. If you have a known parameters, you could do either or. Um, it's very very powerful you can uh, you can achieve almost anything with this okay um, let's reset and I will show you how this behaves if you want to let's say pull data with your response let me just uh, reset the parameters here okay cool so let's recap. So right now I'm searching hello, and what I'm getting in response is a list of strings, basically a list of IDs that my uh, class returned. Okay, so let's say that I wanna present some of the information that I got from the account. So we'll build a get based of our response. So let's just say we'll do a um, text box with the count name we'll do phone and let's do um street let's do um yeah, let's do street. Okay, <clears throat> let's head over to our get, and I'll add an object, and I want to query for the account. Get accounts from Apex result. And what I'm gonna do in the condition is very simple. I'm gonna say account ID equal in, since I'm returning a list of, of IDs from the Apex class, and I'm going to say Apex response, and let's get all of the objects. Let's limit it to a 50. That should be enough, and we'll map some fields, and we'll map the account phone to the account phone, and name to the name, and our street. Um, let's do shipping address. 
shipping street. All right, let's apply and finish. I'll save this and refresh my uh, form. And let's search for hello. We'll search for donkey. And let's bring in something else. Let's say I want to bring United Oil. All right paste this guy in let's run our query and we got a response from apex and then we run our get based on that response so we can see we got the the uh, united oil and gas we got the hello accounts the donkey accounts and um, this is how you can use get or further process you can do push do whatever you like based on the response as long as you keep your response to record ids as a list of string or a single string um, and this is how it's done